أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاتي الله تي الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم وأنا عبدك العجيز الضعيف ومسكين وظالم الجهاد and but by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence Alhamdulillah InshaAllah what, what regard Afaf wa uh-huh. salatu salama wa sayyya Rasulul Kareem ya Habib Razeem wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salama ashraf wa mursaleen Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bin madadakum wa nazarakum Sayyidiya Sultan al-Awliya Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghistani, Sultan al-Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Shaham Kabani, Shaykh Adlan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil bin madadakum wa nazarakum fi had al-majlis as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, 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 Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, may Allah bless you for all these teachings. Alhamdulillah has brought much peace and barakah in our hearts and uh, as a result in my life. My question is, Sayyidi if there is only one person in the home following the teachings in the house, is everyone protected? If there is only one person in the home following the teachings, is everyone protected? InshaAllah every, everyone has their own grave in life. As much as we love all the occupants of a home and their spouses and people love their children and want the best for the children and, but everyone has their own grave. And everybody has an age of maturity in which Allah look to them and look to that individual for they, they have to also want to lift themselves from the train tracks. All of these teachings are giving us an understanding there's a train coming and most people live their life on the track sitting there sort of daring the train to come. And those whom Allah inspire to have good deeds and good actions, then they lift themselves off of that track to avoid that calamity and that difficulty. And Allah protect them and dress them for what's coming upon the earth requires people to get up and off the tracks. So there is, a, there is a, a basic protection because it brings a positive light into the home and into the environment. And then the greater protection lies within the individuals wanting that reality, practicing that reality, asking to be filled with positive lights and, and, and positive actions. InshaAllah. And if the children are still young and an age under maturity then they fall under the tajalli of the parents and hopefully the parents their actions are good and bringing positive energy into the home and into the environment. But inshaAllah Allah dress us and protect us all with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please let us know the importance of the cane, the staff and how we should use it? What is the importance of the cane and the staff? Alhamdulillah that the asa is a, is a sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and it has to do with energy and grounding. That there's a whole section if you email us and we can send you the reply for energy and there's a whole talk on that subject of being an energy being. And the feet are the two prongs that walk upon this earth and we receive the emanations from the electromagnetic field of the earth and these are the dunya desires that are rising. So this is the the horizon energy that's on the dunya and and, and insan is is trying to keep themselves at a vertical. The tajalli from heavens is coming down onto insan and trying to dress the heart and the dunya is on the ground trying to approach insan so the conflict is at at the belly. 
where the energy of the heavens and the energy of dunya are all meeting and trying to overtake insan, one from the heavens wanting to dress the person in perfection and then the dunya desire trying to overtake insan and to dress them with the dunya desire. So as these energies are fighting this is what the called the yin and the yang that the heavenly energy is coming down to dress and the dunya desire and the dunya energy is conflicting. So which one is going to win and which one in this battle? So Prophet described that the root of all sicknesses is the belly because this is where the great conflict lies. All the earthly desires are coming up the feet and the legs and the back and all the heavenly are dressing down and the equator is at the belly where all the conflict of energies and, and all the battle of energy. The Asa was Prophet Wasallam's way of giving us a grounding that when we use the Asa we are grounding the negative energy so that the positive can come and instead of the energy conflicting and battling within us it's a grounding. So it's an earth ground that takes that energy and sends that back down onto the earth to ground us and that was then the three prongs. That's why the electrical systems they only recently understood that they needed a, a grounding wire that takes the electricity and puts a wire to the outside in the dirt to ground any type of electric shock that's coming. But that was the sunnah of the prophetic sunnah from ancient times that when insan is walking two feet the third then is the asa so that it grounds the energy of that person. So alhamdulillah it's a, a great sunnah and anyone who revives the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad then receives an immense reward. And in the last days uh, the greatest reward is to continuously revive the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and its immense energy and has other realities. That when insan takes the sunnah and Prophet blesses that individual with not only its energy but its qudra then for shayateen their asa become like a creature. When Allah told Nabi Musa, throw your staff and the staff became as a dragon that took away all the magic of magicians because the magic of magicians is only at the level of dunya and it's based on falsehood. And Allah describes zahukan that when the haqq comes every falsehood perishes be has no legging and support against Allah's truth. So when Allah want to and Prophet want to and they empower that sunnah then their asa becomes like a dragon. And for the unseen when they see it, they see the asa as moving creature that the shaykh is carrying and that it becomes a dragon that comes out to protect the shaykh and to attack every type of negative energy that is all encompassing and everywhere around. So it has a immense spiritual significance as well as our, our physiology of grounding energy and taking away negativity inshaAllah. Um, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, do we need permission to do the khatim khawajgan as a group in our home? If you are by your family, no. That's why the, the khatim is on the app, the du'as are on the app and uh, <coughs> I think we mentioned that anything that is on the app it already has the ijazah for you to use it. So you don't have to email us that I need ijazah to recite Dalal Khirat. If you're using from the app you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and that is your ijazah because the fact that we put it out it was with permission to put it out. So everyone has permission to do their zikr, to do their khatam, to do salawat, to do the duru, to do the dhikr of Allah, to recite the du'as. Now if you say, I want to gather people and make a, a, a majlis then no, there's no permission to gather people and to, to make groups and then conflict with 
the, the shaykh's assignment of people in different regions and then that's where the nafs gets involved and they start to make a group and this conflicts with another group. So, but just for ourselves and our homes and our loved ones then no problem, alhamdulillah. And it brings tremendous blessing into the home. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Thank you and lots of love. If this majlis is happening in Canada and someone tunes in from Australia, would the angels encircle the whole area from Canada to Australia up to the Arsh? <laughs> yeah, everywhere the circle where if, if there's a majlis in Canada and they're listening in Australia, do the angels circumambulate all the way from Australia <laughs> to Canada and all the way around? Yeah, that's very nice. That would make the encompass the whole earth to be encompassed. Every amal by its intention. So as soon as they turn on the zikr and the live association, when an individual does the zikr by themselves and they call upon the madad has immense blessing and immense angelic reality. And when they turn on to the live association of a shaykh that has a completely different reality. And as soon as that sound enters into the home it's coming with immense force, immense realities like a heavenly lights and riders that are now entering into the home, entering the environment and begin to circumambulate and take away every type of negativity. And every sound has a reality, so it's the same as if you're going to watch a movie with, with the bad sounds and, and bad understanding, it brings immense negativity into the environment and they don't leave. They're unwanted guests that people invite on a daily and moment and minute by minute basis. But when you invite the sobats, the zikrs, the salawats, all of these, these media items that are available, especially the talks, these talks are all Muhammadan haqqaiqs. They come with angels that guard its reality, they come with spiritual beings within the home that want to hear these realities. So they bring a, a, an association into somebody's home. As soon as these are played there are many spiritual beings that come into that environment to hear it, to participate in that association, that zikr, that majlis, that salawats, everything. And that brings a tremendous energy that cleanses, that uh, dresses, that take away every type of difficulty and every type of dress then becomes a, a dressing upon the soul, a blessing upon the soul inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah For those of, of us living in the West, how do we maintain the spiritual consciousness when we step into the company with those who don't practice Islam? How do we be true? For those living in the West, how do we maintain our integrity uh, while we're amongst those who don't believe? May alhamdulillah with all the tools that Allah is, is giving to us, those living in the West have a great opportunity because Islam would rise from the West. The, the thought that the grass is greener somewhere else is, is completely incorrect. People living in the East they're in an association of darkness. The, the Maghrib and the, the light of Islam has already left those regions and cast them into darknesses. And if they're true and they answer truly they'll tell you that their countries don't allow the practice and the ones whom their countries allow there's so much fitna, so much inner fighting. A country like Pakistan and, and, and these that are strong Ahlul Sunnah they know that they have so much fighting, so much uh, they even bomb from different groups, uh, masjids and, and maqams and, and different associations. The, the shaykhs come out, they rally against somebody else, they kill somebody, they're fighting. This is not the real Islam. So this is not a dar, darul ihsan and, and the, the abode of perfection. So the Eastern world that light has set upon them. And because of the time of Mahdiyoon, the light and the reality and the haqqaiqs all will rise from the West where these awliyaullah are in sanctuaries safe from that type of oppression. 
If they took these knowledges and entered into those countries to teach them they would all be arrested because the government doesn't understand it, doesn't accept it and wants nothing to do with these haqqaiqs. And that's why Prophet described that the sun would rise from the west. One, the physical sun because the axis of the earth would collapse and wherever it's hot would become frozen, wherever it's frozen would become hot and the whole axis of the earth will collapse and spin for a great calamity upon the earth. But the spiritual understanding is more important that the ishraqiyoon and those whom Allah will make them and their beings and their heart to be the Divine sunshines and the Divine suns, they will have a sunrise that rises from the west. And they are the ishraqiyoon whom Allah raised them to be the rising suns of Islam. And as they rise and their horizon arises, their lights and their energies, their realities and their teachings are spreading a whole different reality of light and, and haqqaiqs upon the earth. So that's glad tidings for those who are living in the west and that Allah dress them and bless them. The western world is like a clean slate that unfortunately some people from the west when they try to come to Islam they overemphasize and they think that they have to be very angry, they have to have a certain anger and look and appearance. They try to overcompensate thinking, this is what Allah wants. But the reality is Allah wanted in the West their hearts to be like a white paper that they know nothing, they have no preconceived notion. And on that white paper awliyaullah can come and paint whatever horizon and reality Allah wants painted upon that canvas. Because they say little bit of knowledge can block every knowledge. So I mean somebody who has been raised in Islam all their life and in the eastern world where their understanding is uh, very incorrect. Imagine them trying to come towards haqqaiqs, everything they, they listen they say, oh this is not what the Arshik taught us, this is not what the Imam down the street taught us. So each step they're trying to bring that knowledge into a block of the little thing that they know and they have a difficult battle trying to absorb and then after one talk they don't like it they turn off this, the, the channel. But those whom Allah dress from the western world they are a white and clean canvas and their hearts are like sponges waiting for realities. And when this water comes like on a parched desert these realities come, they hit their heart and immediately they're, they've been waiting for it and they're absorbing every reality from it. And that's what Allah wanted for last days and that's how they can attain the highest haqqaiqs of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Remember this way is not based on how, how many shaykhs you've known, how many years you've studied. None of the Naqshbandi shaykhs have any formal education. So anyone who wants to research them, none of them went to uh, uh, Azhar University. None of them graduated from any formal academies because of what they teach in those academies. Their heart would have become darkened from haqqaiqs. So as a matter of fact Allah describes these shaykhs of this reality that even Nabi Musa wanted their knowledge, what? They attained the rahmah and then we taught them ilmul aduni. So what Allah wanted is that they attained an immense characteristic, immense khuluq and character that is under the rahmah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah is their teacher. And Allah when Allah teaches, He teaches from, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum means everything will begin to inspire that servant of the correct understanding and its haqqaiq in which the way Allah wants it to be understood for the last days and the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi Just look at the world now, they said that the rings are shirk, they said that the ayah of the, the evil eye is, a, is, a, is forbidden. They, they cut down the tree because they said, oh the tree has a shirk and people were 
we're loving the tree. Everything of Islam now is lost for these people. Pretty soon maybe they're going to come against the Asa and they say, oh the Asa is a shirk. But all of it is in Qur'an. Every day they're kissing the black stone. What's the difference of that stone and the stone on your ring is that that stone was from paradise and its reality and, and the zikr that it contains and what angel is, is hiding within that reality to witness all those who circumambulate the Kaaba. And then what was the reality of the Asa of, of Sayyidina Musa that Allah said, cast your, your stick and the dragon came out to scare away all of their evilness and badness. And throughout Qur'an all of these realities and that's why in the last days then Allah will bring from the west those whom even the sunnah they follow they know its reality. If somebody doesn't know even the reality of why they're doing the sunnah, they follow the sunnah, they call themselves Ahlul Sunnah but they don't understand what is the power of that asa, what is the power of, of your turban. We put out a, a, a video on how to wrap the turban. The turban is a majestic turban. The turban puts fear into the eyes of enemies. The, the turban has a hayban, majestic crown from Divinely Presence. And when the angels see the Muhammadiyoon in the image of their king, they know the king is Sayyidina Muhammad in the heavens. When they see that image of that servant and they see the turban within the head of that servant, immense lights of Allah's majestic might and majesty dresses that servant. And imagine that dress because the servant doesn't know himself. That dress and that power in, in the last days when Allah wants to open it, what type of fear it puts into the hearts of enemies and those who come against that reality. And these are all the immense inheritance that Sayyidina Muhammad has left for us. Those whom cherish and love his reality they should find immense blessings in everything that Prophet left for us and that when he gives the time in which to energize it and bring its reality out. That anyone who carries an asa, be it the asa like a dragon of Sayyidina Musa that the dragon attends and, and is with them. And the Naqshbandi shaykhs have many qasa and stories that Shaykh Sharafuddin had a student that they kept putting into a prison and he told the, the leader of that region that don't imprison my student. And they put him back into a prison and he said, he's an innocent person, a pious person. And then the shaykh got so angry he went to that judge to talk with him. As soon as he entered into the room that judge fell to the ground and went crawling and came crawling into the presence of the shaykh and begged his forgiveness, kissed his hand and said, I will release that student and we apologize and, and ran out and the shaykh turned around and left. And all the guards in that area they came to the judge said, what happened? I thought you, you, you were coming against them and you, you, you had so many things to say about them that everything they're doing wrong. He says, you don't know. When this shaykh entered the room there was an immense dragon above him and looking at my face like he's going to eat me in one bite. And before anything in my heart I ran to kiss his hands and to seek refuge from what was this man representing. Means Allah and Allah's might and majesty is not something that can be understood. Nobody's in need of it now but what is entering upon this earth of immense negativity, immense darknesses. That's why we said only love can save you because only with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad in which you don't use your aqal, you don't say my siwak I just use toothbrush. A uh, ring I don't need, I, I, I wear this, uh, uh, I saw I don't need, I saw my, my arms don't hurt. That's not to use your brain but you use your heart and say, because I love you and I'm nothing and I want to imitate you and just feel the immense love of your presence by just my imitation. You never know when Sayyidina Muhammad is behind saying that everything you imitate I make it to be real for you. And that servant walks and walks with difficulty that moves away from them out of its internal fear. Even the eye of the person can't see it 
But their beings and their soul can see the majestic light of what's being dressed upon that servant by following the majestic sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Say the clarification on the cane, Shaykh does the cane have to be completely wooden? For the clarification on the cane does it have to be completely wooden? No. It has a, a, a immense blessing, there's some canes with stone, with metal, with uh, wood and alhamdulillah anything that you can, you can get of a cane and imitate that reality, alhamdulillah. Click the link now to subscribe.